Yo, New York Yankees fans and Major League Baseball fans. Yet again, it is Felix from NYNews.com. Like always, all like a So let's talk about the biggest winners and the biggest losers of this offseason. I know there's a whole bunch of free agents still out there, but let's talk about the teams that improved and the teams that hmm, wanted to improve but fell short. But this doesn't mean that they're losers. Some teams wanted to spend, but they didn't really catch the big fish that they were looking for. So let's start with the Philadelphia Phillies. The Phillies have improved for years to come. The acquisition that sticks out the most to me is JT Riomoto. They're going to have him till 2020, two seasons. But if you're the Phillies with stupid money, and let's say the Angels extend Trout, hey, I'll be looking to extend Riomoto. For some reason, every time a player of that caliber, let's say nobody knows about them, but if they're attached to the Yankees, all of these clubs suddenly want to either trade for these players or sign them. We have seen this with JT. We have seen this with Manny Machado. We have seen this with Harper. We have even seen this most recently with Arenado. Specifically, JT and Nolan were flying under the radar. And you saw once the Yankees' names were attached to these players, oh, everybody wanted them. Even without Harper... That trade of Rimuto propelled the Phillies to be guaranteed NL East champs. Let's not forget to mention a good clubhouse guy with McCutcheon. They locked up Nola. They got Segura. They made all of the trades and signings that I wanted the Yankees to make. Obviously, the icing on the cake was the signing of Bryce Harper. 13 years, 12 years, whatever it is, I think it's a long time. I think Harper... Is going to have great years. The first five years are going to be great. But I can see him declining when he's around 31, 32. When again, another free agent that just signed, Manny Machado, is going to become a free agent. If he decides to opt out after five seasons. In my opinion, he secured the bag and he's going to request a trade after three. So, in my opinion and everybody else's opinion, the Phillies won the offseason. Now, let's talk about a loser. It doesn't mean that this franchise is going to lose for years to come. It doesn't mean that this franchise isn't going to spend. The Chicago White Sox. Obviously, they were in on Manny Machado. They offered him close to $300 million. Their fan base can't be that disappointed when their front office made a move for a generational talent like Machado. But you have to consider that the White Sox were in on Machado and Harper, and they did not get any of those two players. So with that being said, the White Sox rank as being one of the biggest losers of this offseason. Like I said, it's not to diss them, but they lost out on two players that they were engaging. On top of that, they traded and signed players just to lure Manny Machado to their club. So if you ask me, those moves for Alonzo, John Jay, hmm, Whatever, they'll help them a little bit, but it wasn't really players that they needed to go out and get. They put too much attention in signing Machado, not that it's a bad thing, but they made moves that, let's say, their time and effort should have been made for other players to improve their ball club, which as of now, they haven't, and they're probably going to lose close to 100 games again. Let's talk about another loser, the Boston Red Sox. You could argue that they still have their starting pitching, but they're really not going into the season with a closer. Craig Kimbrough is still on the market, and it seems that he's either going to sit out the season, maybe sign with the Red Sox at one point, give in, but it seems that he's not going to be a Red Sox. And if you ask me, that's a huge blow to the Boston Red Sox. So you got to rank them as being one of the biggest losers this offseason. After winning a World Series championship, you would have to think that they would have made the moves to, let's say, reassure themselves to being back-to-back World Series champions. And then again, it brings me to another big loser of the offseason, the Los Angeles Dodgers. Here you have a team that has gone to back-to-back World Series, and really they traded away Camp and Puig. You could argue that Camp was a great trade, getting rid of that contract, and he's aging. But Puig was really one of those guys that they liked in the clubhouse subtracting those two players and they made it seem like the Dodgers were going to make a big splash and they didn't they picked up Pollock whatever he's mediocre 
Some people would argue he's great, but whatever. He's not at the caliber of, let's say, a Harper, etc. So with that being said, the Dodgers fan base was left hanging, and you got to rank them as being one of the biggest losers this offseason as well. Now, let's talk about another winner, the New York Mets. The Mets literally picked up the best up-and-coming closer in the game with Edwin Diaz. Phenomenal closer. You could argue that the Cano deal is going to look good when the National League implements the DH. The signing of Lowry was great. He's one of those pesky hitters. Reminds me of Murphy when Murphy carried the Mets to the World Series in 2015. That was, the, that was a boneheaded decision, by the way, that the Mets didn't re-sign Murphy after literally carrying the whole team all the way to the World Series. And we saw after that, Murphy continued to put up good numbers. But the Lowry signing was a great signing. They also got Familia back, a great signing as well. And another great signing was Wilson Ramos. Great offseason by the Mets, obviously not as good as the Phillies, but you got to tip your hat to them. The Mets did a great job this offseason. Hey, they could be a wild card team. And moving on, I won't talk about the Padres being a winner or a loser. Really, in my opinion, they didn't really improve their team. Obviously, Machado's going to be great, but... Really, they didn't add any other players, or I don't see them adding any pitching, any other players to their team. And I can see Machado requesting a trade in three years. He secured the bag like A-Rod Cano. He's just there to collect money. Now, the moment that you have been waiting for, the New York Yankees. Are they winners or are they losers? In my opinion, they're winners. But they could look like losers if, let's say... Miguel Andohar doesn't improve on defense, and let's say he gets into a sophomore slump. Obviously, I do not wish that on Miguel Andohar. I'm obviously a Yankees fan, but they have the potential on just that position to look like losers when the 2019 season is said and done. Obviously, with Nolan Arenado signing that extension, allowing Manny Machado to become a Padre, they have the potential to really look like losers for years to come. When there's no really players you could trade for on the level of a Machado or a Arenado. Like I said, the Yankees rolled the dice with Andujar and they're banking on him to improve. Obviously, the Yankees, the biggest signing, in my opinion, was Adam Adovino. The man literally wanted to be a Yankee. Nobody could hit him. He's great. He's at his prime now. And that was a huge signing by the New York Yankees. Another huge trade acquisition was that of James Paxton. Paxton, the type of pitcher that the Yankees should have traded for a long time ago on the lines of Verlander, etc., a flamethrower. Paxton obviously could be an ace on the Yankees. Could someday, if healthy, put up Cy Young award-winning numbers. So that was a great trade by the Yankees. Another great signing was LeMahieu. Won the bang title one year. Great defensively. Pesky hitter, line drive hitter, puts the ball into contact. Great signing by the Yankees. So that brings me to Tulawiski. We don't know if that's a winning or losing signing right there because the Yankees are practically not paying him anything. So really, the Yankees are automatic winners when it comes to Tulawiski because if they could get something out of him, they're not paying him anything. So it's a win-win for the Yankees. Another legit signing by the Yankees. The other great signings were bringing back Hap and Britton. Obviously, the best out of those two is going to have to be Britton. As one, he's a great lefty reliever, and the Yankees also blocked their competition from going after him. So again, great signings by the New York Yankees. Let's not forget about the extensions. Extending Severino, extending Hicks. An overall great offseason by the New York Yankees, even though they didn't go after Manny Machado or Harper. But like I said, if Miguel Andohar doesn't improve defensively and he calls the Yankees a whole bunch of runs again, they're going to look like losers at that specific position. The only negatives that you could argue could be positive is the re-signing of Gardner and Sabathia. Two players that are going to block younger players of getting a spot on this roster. For an example, Frazier and Loasiga. But like I said, overall, great offseason by the Yankees. They were one of the biggest winners of this offseason, in my opinion. Obviously, directing other funds to be more diverse, in the words of Cashman. So good offseason by the New York Yankees.
if I left any teams out, it just means that these teams did not make much of a big impact or nothing at all. And the teams that I mentioned were the teams that were in media all offseason long. So New York Yankees fans, MLB fans, leave your opinions in the comment section below. Tell me what you guys think. Like always, this has been Felix from MLRnews.com. Share, like, and subscribe, and I will check you out next time. Before it hits the front page.